Hey everybody, welcome to the seedy underbelly of the Dudley Tap Music Factory, and welcome to episode 5 of Dudley's World of Guitar. Okay, so in today's episode, we're going to take a look at the evolution of a song, and so I thought what would be more appropriate right now than the title track off the new album, Cosmic Radio. So let's take a quick walk through the history um, of how it went from being a little uh, riff I was playing uh, in the Bahamas on the couch to uh, you know, the full-on rock tune that it is today. So. To begin this voyage, we're going to go to the sunny islands of the Bahamas. And not just any island in the Bahamas, a kind of a strange, long, thin island called Eleuthera. And uh, there's a a bit of action at the north end of the island, uh, Harbor Island, and there's a lot of uh, wealthy people that have houses there, Lenny Kravitz lives up there i I heard oprah had a house there or something but who knows anyway uh they do spot lenny all over the island because lenny kravitz was born on the island of eleuthera but uh when i was a kid we would go to this club uh at the southern end of the island uh near uh, a place called cotton bay it was the cotton bay club and a really nice beach and they had a hotel and everything. But uh, my grandfather and a lot of his buddies from the Midwest and from the Northeast built houses down there. And so they would go there, you know, basically between, um, you know, Thanksgiving and uh, Easter. And they would go and play tennis and golf. And they had a nice pool. And they always had some cool Bahamian dudes playing uh, music in there, and uh, I jammed with the band one time or several times actually. That was a lot of fun. Um, so, uh, my grandfather built this house and it was off the beaten path um, as far as where everyone else lived down there. So, it's uh, kind of a cool beach. Let's take a look at it here. Uh, it's it's small, it's secluded, it's got a nice little, um, you know, it's a little lagoon here, a little sheltered lagoon, and that's uh, Jack's Bluff off to the left, and that shields it from the prevailing winds, which come from the other side of the bluff over there, and it's just a really nice place to, to hang out. Now the old beach house is a little uh, beat up, and but uh, we love going down there, and uh, so at the end of the day, you know, after we you know, do our hikes or, you know, snorkeling or whatever we're doing, we usually have a couple of beers, you know, and uh, uh, sit on the couch and uh, play some guitar, um, usually after the sunset, and drink a little tequila. And uh, I, it's just so relaxing down there, and there's no interference from... TV, radio, I mean, you can't, there's like hardly any reception with your cell phone. You can barely get a text. And that's nice. So it it clears your head a little bit, I guess, um, to, uh, you know, find some uh, ideas. It it seems to be a fertile place for me to write songs because I've written quite a few of them over the years down there. So anyway, this one started out like this. So Cosmic Radio started out as a a riff uh, in drop D or drop C sharp. Because I tuned down a a half step and then I drop D, so it's drop D, C sharp. And it's really fun to play licks and drop D, you know. It's heavy and it's powerful. And uh, 
but it's been done a lot. It's been done an awful lot. So to come up, you know, for me to write something in drop D that I think is good enough is, is tough according to my own standards. But I kind of liked this riff. Um, and originally it was... So I, I started it out, but I ended up liking splitting hair as I know, but uh, it just felt better to play and sing maybe. Uh, and then I kind of had the idea of the chorus, but I was sort of fumbling. Or I thought it was going to be maybe a B part of the verse. And I won't make you listen to that, but... <laughs> and it's just, you know, me like spitballing some ideas, but that was it. At least I had that idea um, when I got back from the trip. And uh, at that point, I started working with some drum loops. That sounds like this. tell that I was having trouble figuring out what the drums would be under the chorus because it's an odd thing to do on the drums uh, and on the demo that was you know I fleshed those parts out and I had an idea for the solo Like the black crows a little bit, maybe. And then I knew it needed to rock out again, so ended up going back to the original riff. But that's sort of as far as I got it before I got, um, you know, drummers in the room. So what is a cosmic radio anyway? Well, um, for me, cosmic radio is the ability to tune in to something that you may not consider, something cosmic, something unearthly, something that's not normal. And uh, when... You're hanging out in the Bahamas, it's easier to detach. And I think, you know, uh, it may be easier to tune in down there. But, you know, when there's less chatter, when there's less going on, there's no TV on, um, and your phone isn't constantly going off because you have no reception, and, it, you know, you really are able to let your mind go, um... I think that's when you can harness a lot of creativity 
And uh, so the cosmic radio is the ability to harness that. Tunes into the frequency of the unknown, shows you things that you'd never see, live a life that you'd never dream, but you should dream it and you should live it. And the second half is, uh, you know, a love story. So if you keep your mind open, you know, a lot of good things could happen to you. So uh, back to the song. All right, well, let's check out the final session here for Cosmic Radio. Uh, I think you might like to hear the drums at the beginning because uh, they kind of have a cool effect on the tom-toms. Sounds a little bit like the cars, doesn't it? effect here under the second half. Let's see if we can hear Ashley. Cosmic love song. Yeah, I love the way she sings under this. It's totally awesome. All right, so let's see how to play Cosmic Radio. Really, it's uh, pretty simple. Uh, I'm tuned down a half step, and I am drop D or C sharp. So that sounds like this. Love this guitar. <laughs> okay, here's the uh, intro lick. Only happens in the beginning. Um, I like to play the first three notes up here. It just sounds a little meatier to me, but it just goes chromatically up to our drop D. So. Anyway, so the riff. That's yeah, pretty simple. Um, uh, that goes through the whole verse. So, um, uh, So the chorus part, so that's just kind of like an F, just kind of a G. You do a little bit of that punk rock kind of thing. Alright, and then uh, the last part of it is... is an E and then there are two punches before we go back to the verse so ascending notes but as part of chords basically so you could think of that as a G this is a C and then back to the riff. But we're really only playing two notes together. And do a little palm muting. 
to get some of that heaviness out of it. And then on the chorus, you know, let go of the palm muting. <laughs> And then the solo, so the solo um, is at the end of the chorus. So we're going to go to a B flat. basically it um, at the very end of the song the chorus repeats itself and it took me a minute or two to figure out exactly how to do it because the chorus is a little odd one two three four one. you'd think the little climb would be at the end of the measure before the beginning of the next measure but it's at the beginning of the measure so uh, we decided to, to kind of do just a little lick in between choruses. So at the very end of the chorus, where you go. So I just needed some lick there to grab onto because it's a little dead spot. Uh, and that was a little tricky. <laughs> to sing this whole time so it, it took it takes me a while to learn a song singing it and playing it at the same time especially if I'm noodling around in the studio and coming up with you know riffs and I just kind of forget them later but they've been recorded and then they get repeated and then I you know have to learn them again eventually so uh, anyway um, one last little look. The solo on the song is is pretty simple. It starts on the B flat, and you kind of um, you're in the pentatonic. And I'm kind of thinking Black Crows here a little bit, you know, when it uh, goes. Um, um, and of course, that lick down there is going down to G. So you're up on B flat. Chord change, G. And I like to bend up to that major third. And then I can't remember exactly what I did, but. of those deals and then we're back to G so I went and then over the descending part before the second section of the solo I set myself up for D minor by playing a D minor lick and then when it hits that I'm ready to go you know simple it's not rocket science man but uh, I thought it was cool to start out you know kind of like standard sounding solo and then when it got to uh, the verse part under the solo that part, oops, I decided to double it and I thought it just had kind of a cooler sound to it so that very end of the solo is doubled but you can achieve a similar effect if you give it a little smear with chorus but i don't really like chorus i don't like that 
Uh, anyway, <laughs> thanks for listening. I hope this wasn't too boring, but that's how you play Cosmic Radio. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, now let's make some bacon. How about it? Let's preheat that oven to 400 degrees and get out a pan. And uh, I like this one because it's got the grate on top and it's deep in there so it catches all of the bacon grease and you can line it with tin foil for easy cleanup. Now the bacon should be butcher's cut bacon. That's nice and thick. And if you're in Europe, sorry, man, you guys, it's hard to find this stuff over there. Anyway, so we're going to put it in 400, and we're going to cook it for about, you know, 25 to 28 minutes. Let's do 26 here. And we're going to take a look and see uh, how it is at the end of that uh, 26 minutes. And it looks like it needs a few more minutes. You want the bacon to look like it's just starting to burn. That way you know it's been cooked thoroughly. So... Lay out some paper towels because we're going to absorb the rest of that bacon fat that you don't want to eat. It's tasty, but you don't want too much of that. So here we go. Let's uh, pull it out. And set it over here. And uh, just uh, right away, you don't have to wait for it to cool down. Just get your uh, spatula and put the bacon pieces uh, evenly spaced on your paper towel. All right, space them out even, okay. Now we're gonna roll this baby up here. That way the paper towel absorbs all of the grease from the bacon, quite a bit of it. And now you got a roll and you can put that in the oven with your heating plates if you like. And what you get is a really nice uniformly cooked piece of bacon to accompany the lovely scrambled eggs I showed you how to make last week.